good evening participants and delegates thank you for joining chill connect so today we are back with the ku web series that is knowledge update web series a part 5 episode 25 uh sponsored by dr pratibha singh ma'am has uh, made this uh, webinar very live till now and today the topic is uh, menopause in modern perspective so uh, let me introduce our convener for today's session may i have to see yes so dr gayatri gupta ma'am has done mbbs from nagpur ma'am uh, has done diploma in nutrition and fitness uh, from pune ma'am is consultant at vijayanagar multi specialist hospital in agra uh, ma'am is who facilitator for adolescent friendly health service ma'am also uh, received many awards for paper presentations and ma'am uh, was also ex assistant professor at jnmc uh, in varda she is interested in laparoscopic surgery fetal medicine and infertility management and she is certified nutrition fitness coach now let me also introduce dr ashu rani ma'am is consultant at shri ganpati nursing home muzaffarpur trained in ultrasound trained in gynec endoscopy and member of isobar so i will hand over session to uh, dr gayatri i hand over the session to dr gayatri ma'am Dr. Gayatri, please unmute yourself. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I'm sharing my screen. Yes, ma'am. It is visible. Yeah. Uh, it's my privilege to introduce Dr. Pratibha Singh, ma'am. She is considered a laparoscopic gynecologist and IVF specialist. director healing touch multi speciality hospital and ivf unit bhagalpur she is the national coordinator for ie iaec proxy 2021-22 she has uh, had her diploma in advanced gynec laparoscopy from germany hello and a specialized training in reproductive medicine from kolkata and ivf training from dubai she ha uh, has the honor of uh, giving the first ivf baby of eastern bihar and jharkhand i welcome you ma'am and i request pratima ma'am to give her welcome address thank you dr gayatri so good evening to all of you can you unshare the screen dr gayatri ma no. yes ma'am good evening everyone and it is indeed a great privilege for me to welcome all of you for today's webinar and uh, this is our 25th webinar and this time we have come up with the topic which we which was being the most neglected part in our gynec practice menopause was considered as the end of the woman's life but as the life expectancy is increasing women are spending almost one third of their life in menopause so tackling the problem at this phase is quite challenging be it physical emotional psychological or sexual so lot of awareness has been created amongst us to have to how to deal such patients correctly that, uh, with these issues and today i proudly welcome all our dedicated midlife experts who are dealing in and out with such patients so let me first welcome our chief guest our own dr shobhna mohandas ma'am she is incoming president ims and she will be taking charge day after tomorrow so ma'am accept our best wishes for your successful thank you tenure thank you so much pratibha as president ims and welcome today to this forum madam thank you so much for accepting our invitation now our guest on guest of honor is again a very good friend of mine a very <clears throat> charming personality we have been together in many trips i would like to welcome dr pushpa sethi madam president elect ims 2324 thank you so so, well, so welcome uh, madam welcome to this forum and thank you so much for accepting this invitation thank you thank you thank you madam and now our special guest is again a very versatile personality an all rounder in true sense i welcome dr sajush chairperson midlife management committee foxy and to this forum so welcome dr sajush thank, thank you for you. joining thank you thank for thank you joining. madam thank you thank you and i am really very happy today to welcome our another very important guest without whom this webinar on midlife management would have been incomplete although i requested her before but she had some uh, i mean she was busy that time 
but still i could agree her to spare few moments for us here our dear president indian menopause society dr ambuja madam so welcome thank madam you, i am thank really you. delighted by your presence today madam and we are thank really you. honored by your presence thank you so much madam for joining thank you madam thank you president and, and i also want to uh, uh, welcome one of our another very important guest who is here today for some special purpose and which we are going to disclose after some time and she is dr sunila khandelwal madam again one of the strong pillar of ims who has attained national and international fame so welcome ma'am to this forum thank you for joining and thank you for accepting our invitation madam now with lot of gratitude and regards i would like to welcome our star speaker dr meeta singh ma'am again an indispensable person as far as indian menopause society is concerned she is doing so much for the society and we are really proud of you madam she is an academician par excellence and the topic which she has chosen today is quite different which is now i think the need of an hour regarding managing females in their midlife and why there is a need to set up a dedicated menopause clinic so ma'am we are really looking forward for a excellent deliberation and i know it is going to be quite useful for many of us so thank you madam for joining and uh, accepting our invitation now i also want to welcome our chairperson dr sudha sharma madam again a very active secretary general ims always there to help us so welcome madam to this forum thank you for joining i also want to welcome dr aarti gupta madam very dynamic and popular personality and she has recently been elected as secretary general ims for the year 23 24 once again congratulations madam and welcome to this forum now even our debaters are quite committed foxians and ims members i would like to welcome dr lakshmi ma'am and dr sangeeta pahwa and i know it's going to be a great debate today and to judge them we have equally experienced judges i want to welcome dr anita shah ma'am past secretary general ims and dr jyotika desai madam chairperson website committee ims thank i you. welcome both of you thank, thank you for you joining madam thank, thank you thank you so much and today our conveners are also the fresh faces of for our knowledge update webinar so i would like to welcome dr gayatri gupta from agra and dr ashurani from muzaffarpur they are going to take forward this program today from thank here you. so i hand over the session to them and once again a warm welcome to all of you and thank you so much for joining thank you over to dr gayatri thank you ma'am now we are going to proceed to our further session and i'm going to declare the winners of surprise quiz the quiz was held on 10th of march 2022 the question was non descent vaginal hysterectomy can be preferred route in all these situations except fibroid uterus 20 weeks endometrial hyperplasia pre malignant cervical lesions previous vvf repair the answer was previous vvf repair that is we can't do ndvh in previous vvf uh, repair patients i would like to congratulate our first winner dr dhana lakshmi from the results from research am i audible yes 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 yeah. uh, she will receive a book on vaginal hysterectomy by dr shirish shet and she will also receive a, a certificate of uh, appreciation from all of us we also have appreciation certificate for dr deepa kapoor from lucknow Dr. Hina Dhingra from Chandigarh, Dr. Neelam Jain from Delhi, Dr. Reena Shreshtha from Kathmandu, Dr. Ranjana Jha from Kathiar, Dr. Veera Noya from Gwalior. I congratulate all of you. The chief guest for today is Dr. Shobhna Mohandas Ma'am. She is the present. president elect indian menopause society 2022 senior vice president ima trishul vice president mid zone kerala wgw ima past vice president secretary general website committee chair 
quiz chair IMS. She has uh, contributed uh, two textbooks in gynecology and written chapters in several textbooks. And she has been invited as speaker in 400 venues and more. She is a chief consultant gynecologist and laparoscopic surgeon at Sun Medical Center to Shul, Kerala. We welcome you, ma'am. I would request ma'am to say a few words of appreciation, give a blessings to the winners. I am indeed privileged to be called here, here as a chief guest and I thank the organizers for calling me. Atiba has called me to that wonderful place called Bhagalpur twice and once I had gone with Dr. Ambuja. Remember, uh, in such a remote place, this uh, lady is staying and it's so difficult to get out of that place and you imagine she's conducting 25 webinars from with faculties all over the countries on various topics and I think she is a shining inspiration to all of us for how much you can work, whatever your... Uh, environment is you know the way we were going to Bhagalpur I could imagine how much of the smile and how much of this hard work with hard work doesn't remove the smile from her face mm -hmm. so I really congratulate you Patiba for you. all the webinar series that you are conducting you. and I'm privileged to be standing in front of Dr. Sunila Khandelwal with whose in whose tenure I started my IMS journey I remember the photo, combined photo that we took in Jaipur of course, all the stalwarts, the people who were responsible for getting me here to help me are Pushpa Sati, Anita Shah, and lovely friend Amit Ambujar Charnur, and uh, of course, the stalwart of IMS, Meeta Singh, Sudha Sharma, Jyotika, my good friend, who will be with me fighting with the website next year. And of course, Shaijas is from Kerala, and I hope to work with him in the Menopause Society with Midlife Committee. We have to work together. We are both from Kerala, and we are both on the same subject. How can we not work together? So uh, with all this, uh, I think uh, we should start. Uh, yeah. I, I just say best of luck to you, because I'm sure they are all waiting to hear the topics and not to my words. Uh, thank, thank you, Pratiba, for calling me. Thank, thank you, ma'am. And you have to wait for some time, madam. We have to yes, celebrate yes, the winners, winners of the surprise. I mean, uh, yes, yes. the legend quiz. Okay. The guest of honor for today is Dr. Pushpa Sethi, ma'am. She is senior practicing obstetrician and gynecologist at Gurgaon, director Sethi Hospital, president Indian Menopause Society 2023-2024, organizing chairperson. MSCON 2018, Vice President Indian Menopause Society, Secretary General Indian Menopause Society 2018-2019, Chairperson Club 35 and Poise Committee of IMS. She has been past president at uh, Gurgaon Chapter of IMS, IMA and Rotary Club and she has delivered uh, several lectures nationally and internationally. She is a recipient of Lifetime Achievement Award of, by IMA Gurgaon. We welcome you ma'am. A special guest for today is Dr. Shaiju speak. Hello, let, let Madam speak, uh, Gayatri. Yeah. I request ma'am to say a few uh, words and, and give guiding. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Pratibha, for having me here. And I do not want to repeat the same words as Shobhna has said that Pratipa is doing some excellent work and we have all been to Bhagalpur and seen there uh, how much work she is doing and, uh, and she is very ably supported by her husband Sanjay. We should not uh, miss him here. Uh, very ably supported by him, uh, in, uh, you know, as far as even the menopause society work is concerned. And I am extremely honored to be present here in presence of Dr. Meeta and Dr. Sunila. And Dr. Sunila Singh, you after such a long time need blessings from both of you for, uh, you know, my coming tenure. You've always been the guiding forces of all of us in the Menopause Society. And uh, Dr. Abuja, our president, uh, Dr. Sudha, and everyone present here, uh, I think we all are heart throbs for the Menopause Society. We have worked for it for, I don't even remember how many years now. Uh, we have de uh, devoted the greater part of our lives to this uh, society uh, because uh, somewhere, uh, you know, we have always felt connected to the problems uh, of the, the midlife uh, age of women. And uh, uh, congratulations to Pratibha for organizing this uh, webinar and congratulations to all the winners of the quiz and looking forward to the uh, very good evening of deliberations. Thank you. Uh, I will tell them. Thank you, Pushma ma'am. Thank you, madam, for joining. And you 
stay there for a few more minutes, madam. Since uh, a special guest, Dr. Shaijo P, is chairperson Midlife Management Committee of Pogsi, Joint Secretary Kerala Pediatrician of Obstetrician and Gynecologist, past chair Research Committee of uh, KFOG, President Kananur OBGY Society, Fertility Specialist and Gynec Laparoscopic Surgeon at Kanur, Vainar and Vadakar. He's a Fox. He has also received Fogsy International Travelling Fellowship Award in 2019. He has been given several awards and trophies. And he was also given a Kamini Rao uh, orator, uh, oration. So we welcome you, sir. And I would request you to say a few words. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much, uh, Pratipa, madam, for this uh, opportunity. I, I know that you, do, you, have, you have been doing some great work in Foxy, uh, as well as IMS for the last few four years, I mean, last few years. And then, uh, uh, and, and I seriously hope and pray that your journey forward in the organization, in both organizations, both Foxy as well as IMS is going to be wonderful. And uh, I, I should say that it is such a privilege uh, to represent Midlife Management Committee of Foxy on this platform, along with some stalwarts from uh, the field of uh, uh, menopause itself. Um, it's, uh, it's wonderful always to collaborate with um, with Indian Menopause Society and its wonderful leaders, uh, including uh, Shobhana Mohandas, madam, who will be the incoming president, as she already mentioned, Dr. Pushpa Sethi, madam, uh, whom I, I've been in touch with a, lot, with a lot of my midlife management committee programs. I don't want to miss out any names here because I think uh, Dr. Ambuja as well as Dr. Sudha Sharma both have worked so much uh, with wonderful inputs from uh, people like Dr. Meeta Singh uh, on, on guidelines and recommendations and practice inputs to every practitioner who takes care of women in midlife uh, and as well as menopause. And I think it, it has actually taken Indian menopause society to greater levels. And if you look at literature, I think majority of the Indian literature related to women uh, related to uh, in midlife and menopause would come from Indian menopause society. It's such a privilege to collaborate with, uh, with all of you. Um, uh, don't want to miss out Dr. Aarti Gupta, who will be taking over as a secretary general um, as the days go on. Uh, Dr. Anita, Dr. Jyotika, Dr. Lakshmi, Dr. Sangeeta, Dr. Gayatri, as well as Dr. Uh, Ashurani. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I feel so privileged to be here today and I wish the best for this program. And I'm sure with all your inputs, uh, I'm sure it's going to be much more than an academic feast. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, sir, for your blessings and nice words. And please I, stay I with missed us. out on uh, Arti, I think, in my speech. <laughs> Arti, hi. <laughs> I request all our chief guests and guests of honor to please continue with the session. Shobna, I missed you. <laughs> I think we all have missed somebody or the other. <laughs> um. We had we have a session one on know the legend and uh, the winners uh, for the uh, quiz were uh, which was held on twentieth of March on uh, were uh, there were total to, uh, entries were one thirty two and correct answers were one one nine and the wrong answers were only thirteen and the answer was Professor Wolf H Utian and we'll be discussing about him in detail later on in this session the first prize goes to Meenal Deshmukh ma'am from Amravati. She will be receiving a book on Change Your Menopause by Dr. Vulpichyan and she will also receive a certificate of uh, appreciation. The second prize goes to Dr. Shama Rajrani Kapoor from Karnal. She will receive a book on Understanding Menopause by Karen Dalaj and a certificate of appreciation. The third prize goes to Dr. Ushma Manyar from Vadodara. Then she'll receive a book on the management of menopause, annual review 1998, and an appreciation certificate. We congratulate all of you. Now we have... Yeah, I'll, request, <clears throat> I'll request our chief guest, Dr. Shobna Mohan Mohandas, madam, to kindly fill. just say a few words of appreciation for them. I do not know how I can appreciate geniuses who can just find out something on the first thing. They are much above me. Who am I to appreciate them? Just look at some photo on the screen and then you say, it is this person. It's uh, beyond anybody, I think, mm -hmm. I feel. And I, I don't know how you also get these photos from where Pratibha. Ka ka se dun lati ho. 
on top of that she manages to get everybody signatures and kya kya brain i think organization by name is pratibha so to get these photos and uh, remember those people and he is giving a book of appreciation to the person na his yeah, own book yeah, yeah so to know these people get these things done and uh, great great we should learn from you and uh, emulate you and i congratulate all the winners because they are beyond me and i am a small person to appreciate these people because they are much above me i feel but yes congrats to all of you great people thank you thank you madam now we have a consistent winners also actually those who are uh, consistently answering the uh, uh, winners i mean uh, answering the quiz questions so i'll request dr gayatri to kindly announce the names yes ma'am so we have dr shirley arvind ranwal from gwalior she has been participating in all the sessions and consistently consistently answering she is going to get a book on uh, menopause by jolly kinder kindersley healthcare and a certificate of appreciation we really appreciate her for all her efforts congratulations we thank also you, have thank you a certificate of uh, appreciation for dr satinder paul kaur from patiala <coughs> dr anita rajoria new delhi dr indu singh from bhagalpur Dr. Varsha Parapana from Madodra, Dr. Sujata Sharma from Assam. So we congratulate all of you. Request our Pushpa Sethi Madam to kindly, kindly felicitate them. Hello. Yeah, I I didn't. Uh, I just missed out on what you said, Pratibha. madam please felicitate our consistent winners there are the five winners uh -huh. so i just want you to say few words of appreciation for them that's all <laughs> it is uh, I, i must appreciate that it is a different thing thing to win once but to be a consistent winner really requires a lot of perseverance lot of uh, focus you know you have to be really focused on your uh, performance every time the quiz is out and so congratulations to all of you and congratulations and they are all young people you know and it's so nice because i gave my cimp exam this time and so many youngsters coming up uh, in the menopause society this field it's very very encouraging for us and uh, many many congratulations to all the consistent winners keep it up <laughs> thank you madam thank you so much thank you dr gayatri yeah congratulate on the winners thank you chairperson uh, sorry uh, our guest of honors for appreciating our winners now we have certificate of appreciation for fastest fingers because uh, there are a lot of participants and we have various categories there are 15 people who have given the answers uh, very quickly they are dr anupama from muzaffar muzaffarpur Dr. Mamta from Varanasi, Dr. Hitesha Bhatt from Baroda, Dr. Kavita Banwal from Munger, <coughs> Dr. Yashodra Kaur from Gwalior, Dr. Colonel Vinay Mitra from Jammu, Dr. Pranjal Saraswat Sharma from Amravati. Dr. Savita Tyagi, ma'am, from Agra. Dr. Menakshi Sood, ma'am, from Aligarh. Dr. V. Subhasni from Madurai. Dr. Pratima Verma from Kanpur. Dr. Shubhra Singh from Jaipur. Dr. Supriya Jaiswal from Patna. Dr. Anita Vimal from New Delhi. we appreciate and congratulate all of you i request dr sajush if he is there kindly felicitate them if he is there otherwise i request dr meeta madam to kindly felicitate these these winners dr sajush is there or 
And I think he has left, I think. He had some work, actually. Yeah, so I think congratulations. Uh, like, you know, I agree with whatever Shobna and the others have been talking about this program. And, uh, you know, the winners. Uh, so it's not just been the winner, but then consistency and their uh, continuous involvement means that they've been listening to you for the past 25 webinars in spite of the uh, webinar storm that we are having uh, nowadays. So, you know, I congratulate Pratibha more than anybody else. And of course, all the, all the listeners and congratulate to all the winners for today. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request, uh, we have uh, uh, the slight change program today. Now we're going to go for the further session, Know the Legend. And I request Pratibha Singh, ma'am, to carry on the further session. Yeah. Can you uh, unshare your screen, Dr. Rupati? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so now, this time we have a little change in our first session. Normally what we used to have, no, first session, the first winner used to tell about the uh, know the legend uh, person. But this time, the person who is going to speak about the legend this time is Dr. Sunila Khandelwal, madam, who is a towering personality in IMS. And she has been associated with Professor Wolf Utian since long. And uh, very happily, she has agreed to talk about this tall personality. And to chair the session, I would like to welcome Dr. Amuja, madam, who has very happily agreed for that. So I'll request madam, uh, and Dr. Amuja, madam, is our uh, president of uh, Indian Menopause Society 21-22. She is a retired professor in HOD, Ops and Gani Department, Osmania Medical College, Hyderabad, visiting professor, Savita University, Chennai, all India Vice President in the Family Planning Association of India, President SPAI. Pratibha, we will talk about, about the legends first. And uh, peer reviewer. So I will request Madam to kindly introduce our uh, our legend, Dr. Sunila Khandelwal, Madam, to uh, just introduce no need, no need to waste time. Just uh, two Thank madam. you. Pratibha, thank uh, you very much for giving me the opportunity to introduce my FFE. <laughs> He, really, it is a proud privilege to introduce the legendary figure in IMS, as Please you said. Sunila and she's a strong pillar of uh, IMS. That is Dr. Sunila Kandraval. I don't want to read all these things because, you know, everybody will get dates or reprises and publishing all this. I just tell a few words about Sunila. Uh, shall I tell a long story or short story? If I start telling a long story, the whole session, I only, are you able to hear me? Yes, yes, madam. Yeah. Uh, the whole uh, session, I only should speak. So I limit myself by telling the short story. Please, please focus that. No, others also will read. And she, right, right, you know, Sunila is a close friend of mine. And she calls me as FFE. I'll tell you at the end, what is that FFE? <laughs> Sunila, I saw you. <laughs> When you took charge as president of IMS at Surat in 2007. And when I saw you, I was staring at you and I thought president means it should be like this. Sparkling eyes with intelligence, well-dressed, attractive. Those are all the things that are there. And that is how the first attraction to push me into the IMS is my own Meeta. And second is Sunila. <laughs> that Sunila has a rich clinical and academic experience of 38 years and she is dedicated to menopause. Her passion is work globally for midlife women, women's health care with IMS. Her mission is converting miserable lives into meaningful ones. She had the honor of working as President Indian Menopause Society, represented India at various levels, like North American Menopause Society, Asia Pacific uh, Federation, CAMS, British Menopause Society, European Menopause Society, and Andropause Society, so, 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 so. She's holding a prestigious position of Secretary General, Executive Board Member, International Menopause Society Member for Networking of Global Initiative in 57 countries. It's not an easy thing for anybody to do such a um, magnificent job. She's a woman of substance. Wow. 
a best gynecologist of the state of Rajasthan. Or uh, really, when I saw that, I thought, what is this woman of substance? Common man uh, doesn't know much about menopause, not aware of it. And she's the first to start dedicated menopause clinic in Rajasthan. She's regularly inviting many talks like TV talks or uh, radio talks by uh, in the different uh, parts in different NGOs level and all. She published books to the level of the public. That is, stay healthy after 40 in menopause, like osteoporosis, cancer prevention, nutrition and exercise, etc. Everybody knows about Sunila, but still I thought again and again we should repeat so that we will get enthusiasm to follow her in future. She produced documentary, that is Sumangala, and also published regularly articles. Who is that? You want me to stop? <laughs> Yeah, I, I want that the legion give me give me just two more minutes I'll finish it off and publishing regularly articles on women's health and health columns of leading magazines and newspapers she's founder editor of journal of midlife health all of us very fond of it and that is the index journal you know jogi that is the journal of obstetrics and gynecology was also it took such a long time get to get indexed but it is a prestige and it is an honor for us that our midlife journal was indexed very soon. That's what is the stature of the articles that are produced in that one. And she is the one inducted credentials of Indian menopause practitioners exam. And the first convocation was uh, conducted by her only. And now everybody is very eager to participate in the convocation. She had advanced training in the management of menopause in Detroit. Of course, she doesn't need it, but it is for her to, it is to mention. We are all very familiar with her legendary lectures. And she had uh, given lectures at various levels. And innumerable awards I'm not going to mention, except to, that is Women of Future, FICCI Award, and award of excellence that is given in 2016 by International Menopause Society for remarkable role of General Secretary CAMS. As it is to become a General Secretary, the CAMS level is something great. Even you have seen at our uh, uh, Indian level, there were four uh, um, in, uh, the, uh, part, uh, uh, applicants who have contested for this, means that's such a powerful force at the international level, she could get that award of excellence. In 2018, she was honored as the most prestigious international Wolf Wittian IMS CAMS Award for achievements in furthering women's health. This is what are her achievements. One more thing just I want to mention, or many of you may not be knowing, only me and uh, Meeta know, and maybe some of her friends, she's a good cook. <laughs> she being a North Indian, and it's very difficult to satisfy the tongues of South Indians because we have various uh, things, as especially vegetarian foods. Her son-in-law being a South Indian, she cooks for his taste. She always appreciates mother-in-law. Second thing, you know, cleanliness to the core. Deepavali means you should see, I heard from the, for her own student. She with the sari up, she started cleaning whole house and she kept it as a spick and clean. That's what is Sunila. Sunila, we are really proud of you. And Pratibha, thank you for giving me the opportunity, though it took a little more five minutes. I thought... Uh, Again and again, I'll talk about Sunila. She is my FFE. She calls me because she says I am friend forever. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Over to Madam. Yes, Madam. <laughs> Thank you, Sunila. Thank you so much. 
you are not tired but i was listening and i was tired of listening <laughs> no no me. it is in short only not not full anyhow i uh, uh, thank you so much for showering so much affection ambuja all the time and uh, this is how the ims family is we all are family and we all appreciate and encourage each other so this is the fact the flavor of ims uh coming to the task given to me uh, is to introduce a legend is something a big challenge for me and pratibha i must congratulate you for conducting such type of webinars with an interesting quiz but giving this task for 8 minutes for a legend like him my mentor my inspiration is was really a challenge but i will just end up and do justice within time so uh, let me share my screen I think you have some uh, no. command. Can you please accept my request, ma? Okay. Ah, uh, just a minute, ma. Because it was with your uh, previous setting, it is like that only. Ah, uh, no problem, ma'am. No problem, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, can you please click this? I can't control your laptop, so can you please click this duplicate slideshow, ma'am, in this option? Where is the duplicate slideshow? Up, up. Yeah, I can. Just wait. Uh, yes, ma'am. Can you please again? That? Again, you display that. I am not duplicate slideshow. Okay, fine. Can you see now? Uh, uh, not yet, ma'am. because my screen shows full full screen now yes ma'am now we can see now we can see yes, yes. Okay. okay so uh the legend professor wolf mutian a gynecologist a reproductive endocrinologist world's renowned re clinical researcher and academic women's health department administration administrator is best known for the first recognizing menopause as a potential health related issue of course popularly known across the globe as godfather of menopause and i think with his efforts and with his vision the menopause was born as a subject of interest the legend has a remarkable professional career spanning of 6 decades and various accomplishments have impacted the health and quality of life of millions of women throughout the world recognized as the pioneer in the women's health he was one of the first to draw attention to the risk of teenage pregnancy he was co-founder of the south african inherited disorder association and his pioneering work in ivf surrogacy with many media articles a notable recent one being titled as lon wolf meet the father of gestational surrogacy and i'm sure sonia being here must have gone through this important book the latest book so uh, the recognized he is a worldwide uh, recognized pioneer of the menopause research in clinical practice the evolution of the menopause of healthcare i think starts with his journey when he just found it found uh, started the first clinic across the globe in the world that is in south africa 
the first clinic was named as the Feminity Clinic, and later it was named as Mature Women Clinic. And today's webinar it is so it is so uh, relevant to uh, to know that Mita is going to speak on how to establish menopause clinic, and he was the one who established the clinic in 1967. He is the world first research, he founded first, um, established first research center on menopause in 67 to know the risk and benefits of HRT. The first pub article on menopause was published by him, the Feminine Forever, and he uh, started first menopause cl club in 1970. He was one of the pioneer of the bone density testing and uh, responsible for bringing the first bone densitometry system in Ohio. Why the keys is stuck? His uh, naming the uh, uh, his accomplishments. Uh, he became the first of the three co-founders of the International Menopause Society in 1976. And now this society, everyone knows that he is have thousands of the members and, and he also helped to initiate various, inter, various national menopause societies over the 30 countries. He was founder of the CAMPS, that is the Council of Affiliated Menopause Societies to provide the democratic forum for all nations associated with IMS and to foster research in all the nations to, and this is an organization with over 50 member countries. Uh, in 1989, the most renowned North American Menopause Society was found, founded by him only, and, and he, was, he remained as executive director for 20 years of this uh, society. Uh, in 1977, he left the academic department and he came to Cleveland and started Cleveland Clinic and found the Rapid Research Center. And here I met him in Boston first time, 1997. And since then, I'm proudly privileged rather. I'm so lucky that he is my mentor in this field. And soon I returned from the conference. It was the first chapter which started in Jaipur in 1997, the same year with the help of our founder president, Dr. Rama Vaitya and Dr. Gurga Shikha as a secretary general. Continuing his accomplishments is a long list, but I will just read out a few. Uh, one of the world pioneers in the infertility, the rapid medical research, he was a part of the team to initiate studies on the first new natural estrogen. And he has been a teacher, lecturer, and visiting professor over 30 countries. In 2007, he earned the degree of doctor of science. His dissertation, dissertation was on menopause and its management, the physiopathologic foundation, a great document for us to go through it. And this was the 11th time this degree has been awarded over 100 years of the university history. He is known as the world most prolific author of the studies in the field of menopause and published more than 200 articles. Most importantly, he was the co-founder of the Maturages, which is a very popular and important and highly ranked journal of high impact factor of European Menopause oh. and Endopause Society. He also found the Menopause Journal in 1994 and also the publication of as Menopause Management. I'm really happy to see when the, uh, these felicitations were going on for the awardees. And one of the first uh, prize winner is going to have this book, The Change of Menopause, which I received at its launching by none other but Dr. Professor Wolf Utien to be with his best wishes. So this is a big treasure in my uh, cupboard, my, uh, you know, my all academic uh, cupboard where I always get inspiration. And his most recent bestseller uh, book is, Is This My Problem or Yours? Wolf Utian Strategy.
you can go through the series of publications on his website and it's available all the books are available on amazon he's the recipient of the numerous honors and award worldwide honored with the lifetime uh, uh, achievement award by international menopause society and other international awards like good housekeeping as one of the america's best physician in women's health by ladies home journal as one of the top 10 researchers in women health by fda by collective outstanding performance of the menopause and hormones information campaign and also by canadian menopause society as menopause trailblazer award in 2017 the important visionary staff and most uh, uh, for international menopause society uh, he established an annual full fortier award and the uh, which is which is going to be presented by any member who supported local camps or does great work in their own country to further education on the menopause and here comes my golden my treasure with golden words from him the email which i received with the information from the head office that i was the first awardee and the winner of the award and with him getting the congratulations was really like overwhelming moment for me and honestly without his inspirational guidance and encouraging words and support from my own ims family with continuous help i wouldn't be able to do anything and this award goes to ims family only this was the award and receiving this award prestigious award from father of menopause meant a lot to me in 2018 and these are the sweet memories madam moria his lovely wife was there i was thankful for her warmth and affection and here this this picture you can see here this was the camps evening picture where the camps meeting was there and if i was surprised to know that after becoming the president of the international menopause society he again represented nams uh, as a camps representative when i was secretary general of camps so this was beyond my imagination sharing the stage with him these were the moments and thanks to my own ims family who has kept our visibility strong at the great academic event and also for this excitement in my life you can see all the eight past presidents over here joining the celebration and i have my own lovely friends here and uh, of course sonia who sown the seeds of advocacy in 2008 was there and here comes when the seed was sown in 2008 where which was a milestone year for international advocacy i'm thankful to sonia as the chair of that organizing committee or the chairman of the congress and of course the secretary of that organizing um, committee dr jyoti uni we thoroughly enjoyed and this was the step ahead for our international our indian menopause society for association at international level and it was none other bulpuchian who has given the opportunity of this honor to have indian menopause society endorsement for north american menopause um, recommendations which we usually follow and or often quote here Meeta has been always associated many times associated with me and this is a beautiful picture of Meeta with the NAMS conference and where we enjoyed together both Korean orations and I would not, never forget the American Medical Women Association conference at Cleveland where I had a close uh, conversation with Wolf Tian and he mentored me like anything uh this was the meeta who presented uh, the first indian study at san diego conference when bul putin was there also and the uh, colin mackey was as president and my journey with international menopause society continued meeting him every time getting inputs from him inspiration from him various congresses and of course this is the regional international congress of taiwan where we shared the stage at welcome reception and this was the 2019 i met him last uh, 
because after the COVID, we could not meet where Moria was there sitting beside me and we listened the oration, which was on the topic, the history of hormones have, we have delivered what we promised. And this was very, very wonderful oration. The house gave an astounding, standing uh, uh, salute rather to him. And he continued to bless me even for New Year wishes, very much socializing, affectionate person. I would finish this in, uh, with the, my heartfelt gratitude that yesterday only I just emailed him. I wanted to update about him that just please let me know for these two years when I was not meeting, I was unable to meet you. And he sent me an affectionate email with this slide and the message, which you will also enjoy relishing this, that the success is, life is a journey, always remember, not a destination. And it has been my privilege to meet, met so many of you somewhere along the way. This was the message he given when he was awarded in August 20, 2021, the Benendi Kelly Award for Visionary Leadership in Women's Health at Virginia. So uh, this is, and this is her, his favorite poster, which he often puts in the conferences. So what are you doing with your life? Life is skills, HIV consciousness, mentorship and support, guided career research, study bursaries, entrepreneurship, corporate training, confidence in English, hospitality awareness, and capacity holding, and teamwork and leadership. So get yourself a better chance. Get yourself a skill for the life. This is the message for all, everybody, every time he has. And um, for more updates, you can visit his website and Wikipedia where you can uh, just see more updates about him. So I would end wishing him a long, healthy, happy, peaceful life ahead. May God bless us to follow his footprint. And with my sincere heartfelt gratitude, I just give a big salute to this legend. legend. And thanks, Pratibha, for giving me opportunity. And this was just an humble effort from me as a chair of International Advocacy Committee of Indian Menopause Society. So thank you so much for being here and sharing the joy of presenting this legend with me. Thank you so much. Thank you, madam. It was wonderful. And congratulations once again, madam. And you have really reached on the, I mean, topmost height. So really wonderful thank you so much and uh, i would i would i would request pratibha to just give uh, just i'm just not uh, sharing my screen now and uh, just give one minute to me to just request sonia to say a few words yes yes definitely she was the one who saw the advocacy and she was there every time and meeta also here sure she will be uh, covering this aspect in her lecture, but Sonia, I this thing cannot finish without you. Thank you very what much, you Sonia. Know? All that I can say is a legend speaks about a legend. So congratulations, congratulations <laughs> for, for giving us such a wonderful uh, review and an update on the life and achievements of such a great man. We have always been closely associated with him, but more with you rather than him. And so, I mean, hearing from you about him has been a one has been really interesting, interesting, and uh, so many things you have told us which probably I didn't know. And more than that, you know, uh, basically, like everybody said, you have uh, made us all proud by reaching that level which none of us could do, and that is the biggest achievement for all of us uh, at IMS. We really congratulate you for all that you have done for us. As the chairman of the advocacy committee, uh, the international committee, you really have lived up to it. And congratulations for that. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you for joining and giving your opinion. Thank you so much. 
And thanks, uh, Sunila Madam, for letting us know about uh, Professor Utyan and also about our Indian Menopause Society. So many legends we have in our society also. So I just uh, have a big regard for all of them. And with this, I would like to present a small memento, a plant to you, which will reach to oh. your house oh. and one oh certificate, God. which will be... Which will oh, be my God. God. So oh this uh, so thank you so much for doing this to me to us for this uh, okay, program. Okay, before before I finish, uh -huh. let me uh, just show this thing to you. Can you show the screen? Can you show me? This yes. is the book which I want to show, and without receiving your plant and the memento, I will show you that I received already from you. And can just see it is lying with me and it is with oh, me oh, now. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So sweet, Vero. So just consider I received it and it's a great moment for me and yeah, thank you for this honor. Thank you, Madam. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 It's a memorable movie. Sunila, Anila, we cannot but uh, stand without appreciating you. How could you manage to collect so many photographs, arrange them on time, and present in every conference in yeah. the same way as you do it? We should come and visit your house and see. I <laughs> really hats off to you. And yeah, as uh, Sonia said, you have taken the Indian Menopause Society to such heights. And now, Everybody is recognizing IMS even at the international level. Hats off to you, sir. You. You. But honestly, this was the biggest challenge for me for life. Thank Pratiba, you. you have given me the biggest challenge. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, madam. So, now, we, now we will move on to the second session. So I'll request Dr. Gayatri Gupta to kindly introduce our chairperson for the second session. Yes, yes. Uh, I cannot share my screen. Somebody is sharing. Please allow me yes. to screen, share my screen, please. They will be sharing it. You just, uh, they will be sharing it. Okay. Yeah. Just show the chairperson's slide. Support. Yeah. Uh, we'll be starting with our uh, next session in which we have our speaker, Meeta Singh Ma'am, who's going to give uh, deliver her lecture. The chairpersons for the same are Dr. Sudha Sharma, ma'am. She's a pro former professor, PG Department of Ops and Gaini, GMC, Jammu, Secretary General, IMS, Honorary Professor, IMA, Managing Committee Member, PSOA Society of India, President, Jammu Ops and Gaini Society, 2018-20, Founder, President, Jammu Menopause Society, Editor-in-Chief, JMH, Member, Editorial Board, Editor-in-General. She has been editor and advice on the advisory board of various journals, and uh, she is a faculty member consensus document on menopause and osteoporosis (IMS). She has uh, various textbooks and chapters contributed to various textbooks. We welcome you, ma'am, and uh, thank you for chairing the session. We also have Dr. Arti Gupta, ma'am, from Agra itself, to chair the session. She is the chairperson of Indian Menopause Society. Club 35 Plus Public Awareness Committee Publication Voice 2020, President Agra Ops and Gaini Society, ex Chapter Secretary IMS Agra, ex Joint Secretary AICUG 2016 Agra, Founder of Satsar Group, Founder and Head of Satsar Society NGO, Founder of Hum Satsar Group, a social group of 200 members of health awareness. She has received many awards and she has conducted several camps which uh, accounted for more than 1,800 patients at a time. She is a senior to me, a guiding figure and my mentor. And she's, pro, she's a loving personality. I welcome you, ma'am. Now I request uh, Sudha Sharma, ma'am, to introduce our speaker, Meeta Singh, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much, uh, dear Gayatri, for uh, uh, that kind introduction. Uh, a very good evening, dear friends. Uh, can I have Dr. Meeta's slide, please? So at the beginning, I really want to congratulate Dr. Prativa for, you know, uh, organizing this ongoing series, knowledge update 
uh, which she's been doing since last year and it's been the 25th in number and you know inviting all the stalwarts of Indian Manoka Society on this platform and I really want to congratulate and thank you Dr. Sunila congratulate for taking IMS to that level international level and being an inspiration for all of us at Indian Manoka Society and thank you for you know making us aware about uh, the godfather of Manoka Dr. Wilson Kutya and uh, you know uh, you uh, thank you so much uh, Dr. Pratima for inviting me and making me a part of this event thank you so setting up a menopause uh, clinic the aim is you know to offer a comprehensive service under one roof for the care of climatic and geriatric women and who can be the best person than Dr. Mita to speak on the subject as you know she herself has framed the guidelines so it's my proud privilege and pleasure to introduce someone like Dr. Mita, with whom I have a very, very long, pleasant and friendly association since 2002, when, you know, she uh, organized that national conference and invited me as a chairperson. And can you believe I chaired that session with Dr. Uh, you know, Ambuja. And after 20 years, we are back again, uh, both of us on that platform once again. So she has you no, know, Dr. Mita has her heart and soul in the society. A true researcher, I would say. She is a co-director consultant of Obstetric and Gynecology, Tanvir Hospital, Hyderabad, editor in chief, JMH 2022. She has been past president Indian Menopause Society 2012, a founder peer review task force, past founder chairperson research committee IMS. Founder Secretary Indian Menopause Society Hyderabad chapter. She's member of Consensus Document for Update on Hormone Therapy 2002 and 5 IMS. Member of Consensus Document on Update of Hormone Therapy 2007, International Menopause Society Budapest. Member of Consensus Document Asia Pacific Menopause Federation 2008. She's on editorial board of Consensus Document PCOS India. Editor Menopause Management Simplified, Editor Post Menopause Osteoporosis. She's been Chief Editor Clinical Practice Guidelines on Menopause. We all know how much are we benefited with this. 2013, she's been updating it, 2020, and Clinical Practice Guidelines on Post Menopause Osteoporosis, 2013 and 19. She has published many, many clinical papers in national and international peer reviewed journals. She is, and she has, you know, received. Uh, many awards as the best paper uh, uh, continuously uh, two times in Indian Menopause Society. She is number of presentations at national and international meetings and experienced clinical trial investigator and has served on editorial boards. She is cervical cancer screening and HPV vaccination camps with uh, GAP, IO and FOXY and her area of interest we all know as obstetrician and menopause osteoporosis and gynae ultrasonography. So over to you, Dr. Mita, for your favorite subject. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, <clears throat> namaste to everybody and thank you very much uh, for having me here. And um, I really, uh, uh, you know, would like to thank all these, all the IMS family members. So I would say, uh, the generations, you know, the senior generation and the junior generation who has joined in today uh, to listen to this uh, very simple topic as to how to set up a menopause clinic. And uh, actually, we have been talking about this. So many of you, the senior people would have, uh, you know, not only uh, heard, but you yourself have presented it over the last one or two years, where we have been aggressively promoting the implementation of which we're doing. So um, I start off my talk. Thank you. So I am, you know, bypassing all the things that, yeah. uh, Can we approach everybody? Put every other. It's very disturbing. From the shield, please, can you mute everybody? Otherwise, it's very difficult. Yeah, thank you. And I said, I'm just, uh, you know, thank you, everybody. So I'm not taking any names. I'm, and I'm going straight to the topic now. How to set up a menopause clinic. So I have no disclosures for this particular topic, but this is the sunset, sunset. So the dawn of your life can be as beautiful as this. 
So that is how I look at aging. And that is how I think Indians look at aging, that every phase of your life is just beautiful. So I wanted to, you know, put this and I think the last one, one hour fit hota because you know we have the entire IMS family. Education to chalta rahega, but the jo bhai chara hota hai, that is wonderful. And I think Sonia being here. Uh, was wonderful and she has like uh, um, uh, Sunila has said she was the one who started this advocacy she was the one who said we have to go international and she was the one who first you know made me also go with her and attend those um, menopause meetings so uh, thank you so, uh, Sonia for that uh, trend setting in uh, um, the IMS which has made IMS truly international and of course it is the work of not only the few senior uh, IMS members but it is the work of each IMS members at the ground level. There are so many unsung heroes who are doing fantastic work at the ground level, who, you know, contribute to the entire work. So thank you, everybody, all the members. Uh, so the discussion I'm going to take you forward is the facts and statistics, why we need this clinic, what are our strengths in India, and what are the challenges. And finally, I'll end up with how to set up a menopause clinic. What I'm not going to discuss is who's going to do it, what is the criteria, are there any standardization, are we going to have an audit of the work that we are doing and who is going to benefit out of this? So is there any monetary benefit when you start a menopause clinic? I'm going to leave this for the debate. So these are the topics that I'm going to do. We know that in the population, the uh, 1.2 billion and out of that, so many millions are about the age of 45 and about 8 lakhs about the age of 80 years. So the, there is a quantum jump from the, uh, you know, in the 1940s, where the average female lifespan was 30 years, and today it is 73 years. That means one fourth of your life is going to be spent after menopause. So, so that we have to now pay attention to this group of women. Earlier, it was always reproductive health, reproductive health, reducing the maternal mortality. And I think we should congratulate all the people from the Foxy as well as everybody who has really made an effort to bring down that mortality rate from you know thousands to the hundreds that we have today. So we have to now work on the 140 million women over the age of 50 years. So these societies are just for us to focus our works on different areas. But I think it's the all the gynecologists and obstetricians all over India who really have to work together for the health of the women. And uh, so like, I'm not going to go into these slides much because all of us know that metabolic syndrome, diabetes, osteoporosis, all of them happen 10 to 20 years earlier in Indians compared to the Caucasians and we age early generally. And I'm sure as obstetricians, we know that even when the UK had put in their NHS had put in that you can wait for 14 days, um, you know, post term. Tell me, cross your heart and tell me how many of us would wait for the post term to go on when we didn't have the color Doppler's. We wouldn't. The minute the, the woman crosses her uh, delivery date, and surprisingly, many of the times we would find meconium if you're waiting too long. And that is how actually we start aging right from your neutral. And we have a beautiful study on this by Tripura, who had presented that, yes, we have more meconiums when we wait for too long because placental insufficiency sets in earlier in Indians. The reasons we're not going to discuss now. But again, so we suffer early. And all the chronic disorders happen 10 years earlier. So you see, we are, we are aging early. We are having all the long-term disorders and our age of menopause is early, but our lifespan has increased. So that needs, that is the reason that we need to pay attention to this group of women whom we have to really work on. And there is a huge empty canvas where all of us need to really work on. And um, yeah, so, I mean, there's another area which is really coming up a long way. It's not about osteoporosis alone. So the fracture which is going to happen is not just the bone mass, but it is the sarcopenia. And this small study done by Marwa has shown that 20% of the postmenopausal women will have a lean uh, a mass, muscle mass, and which is and our basic muscle mass compared to the Caucasians is about 
30% lesser. So the chances of us fracturing is much higher. The cancers, the uterine cancer and the breast cancer is on the rise now compared to the cervical cancer earlier. And this was a study which we had done in 2012. And I think now it's high time that we really have to again look at our statistics. And this is where we need to have collective effort to get the statistic together to understand the chronic disorders. And this is what uh, actually uh, Sunila was talking about, which we had presented way back in San Diego. And, uh, you know, the, the chronic disorders disorders, the prevalence in that 1,800 group of women that we, was a multicentric study done by the IMS members. And if, from my own data also, it's not very different from what you find from the IMS data, where there is a cluster of all these chronic disorders, which starts off after the age of 30, 35, and peaks around 50s and 60s, and then slowly comes down because of the numbers. And, and the overweight Obesity and overweight is a huge problem in our country, and it is it is very, very prevalent. And as the woman is transiting from 35 to 50, the, the weight increases. And after 55, the weight decreases. And that is or that is mainly because of your muscle loss, and it is not the fat loss. So we have we have, like Dr. Rama keeps saying, we have this triad of sarcopenic, osteopenic, sarcopenic obesity, and it's a deadly triad. It's not only about bone health there, it also is about the metabolic health. So there are a lot of areas which we need to work much more than what is just not about hormone therapy. And we need to actually read and condition ourselves and, and sensitize ourselves to all the other disorders. You know, in one of the editorials I had written, you know, from that exciting work of a uh, busy obstetrician and you know people come and they're so happy you are you've got a happy mother and a happy child the atmosphere is very different or being a good laparoscopic surgeon and when you take up this menopause work it is very different it is just like going back to being a physician but then i tell you one you see the smile on that um, midlife woman or the aging woman you treat one gsm patient and it it is very very gratifying and so these are some of the slides which i put in to make you understand the amount of calcium even in my own study in from my hospital was only 38 out of 38 percent so the amount of calcium that we indians are taking is just about 300 milligrams versus the 600 to 800 milligrams, which is uh, actually what we should be taking for bone health. So what are the challenges? It is the early median age of menopause, high prevalence of the early onset of all the disorders. And we also need to redefine premature and delayed menopause. So we cannot go by the Western standards because we age, we, our menopause is 47. So naturally, according to the two standard deviation, it will not be 40, but probably at 38. And, we, and the infertility uh, people would vouch for it that we the ovarian reserve starts falling right after, even earlier, not 30, but even earlier probably, and not due to many other reasons. So the POI is also a big benefit which we have to look into as a part of the menopause treatment. So early onset of of declining fertility and we have our dietary excesses and deficiencies so we have you know not only the macronutrient it is deficiency of the micronutrient it's not just the fat we also need to take care of the micro and the micronutrition and we have the dominance of the non vasomotor symptoms our people are not too worried about a little bit of the hot flush they think it's part of you know getting old it's too hot but it is so many other non vasomotor symptoms which we need to really look into and we also have a lot of complementary and alternative medicine which is not standardized and of course the costness the awareness amongst the public the awareness amongst the professionals to deal with these menopausal women and that is the reason why we really really need to pay attention to this aging woman the midlife woman and like um, Jaydeep says, you know, so there was a huge debate at one point of time uh, in the menopause society as to what should be the cutoff when we start screening. Should it be 35? Should it be 40? So but I leave it to you because it's it's open, but we had set it at 35. And that is how we, uh, Jaydeep's uh, brainchild on starting this menopause clubs for 35 plus. So that means you start, or because we age early, we start sensitizing women at the age of 35. And by the time they are 40, you of course start screening them for any problems. So that is how it has come in. But we have in our study in 2012, 
what we found was we have strong strengths because we had asked some very simple questions and what we found our traditional mindset our culture our close family ties our close family you know that's how this IMS family is very very close and our diet we have fresh food we don't store food we don't like to put the uh, food in the fridge and then you know eat it after a week so the kind of food that we have the lifestyle that we have the faith I think the spiritualism all of them help us in aging better help us you know and then of course never never to forget the grandchildren that we have around us and all this makes you know the aging a wonderful experience so menopause for us is accepted as a natural part of life that is a god's will and i think that is our strongest strength but when you look at the you know a little bit of the other other side of the problem when you're practicing we know that almost all medicines are available any by any friendly chemist so nothing is like schedule h and schedule um a, a, a or L and uh, uh, and the government has not yet paid attention to this midlife woman. So uh, hormone therapy as of now doesn't come into the essential group of medicines. Actually, we had lobbied for it and I remember I did attend one of the meetings of the essential group of medicines in Hyderabad at NN long back and even at that time, they they actually made Dufistron as one of the essential medicines at that time. I, still, I don't know whether it is still present, that is Dihydrogestron, but uh, they didn't put the estrogen in. And if you, so so the we don't have a government subsidy it's not available so what the what what the what the people who can't afford you know, cannot be spending 500 rupees or 1000 per month for hormone therapy and uh, so that that is a major major problem when you're running your menopause clinic and here i'm not going to speak much about uh, wolf putian but like you said he is he is an amazing he is a legend and I remember that uh, after meeting him, I had written to him, I've met so many people and then people work because you want to be successful, but legends work only for the passion and he is one of that kind and like uh, and this was amazing like you know he is not only in the field of menopause infertility he was the first person to have a surrogate mother so surrogate mother was already there but he was the first person to get the ovaries out of the uh, biological mother and use the surrogate mother so that was what was important in 1985 and it made big news everywhere and now it is norm uh, uh, in 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 everybody's uh, uh, in uh, all over the world so um, more about him actually he has he was one of the uh, persons whom uh, when Duru had asked me to write um, uh, uh, you know the complete book make uh, this thing on menopause insights he was the one who gave uh, a very beautiful article which was completely out of the blue you know for me it took a little time to understand he had written on hormone therapy for transgenders at menopause and for HIV so one I think in that book it, it, it was an HIV and at another point he wrote on transgenders and he had written the commentary for the guidelines in 2012 so we uh, and he is an amazing personality and he was like we said the first clinic in the world was started in South Africa but for so many political reasons he shifted to US and that's how he settled over there and not to forget in India the first really established uh, um, menopause clinic was found that was started by none other than Dr. Rama Vaidya, our founder president, Dr. Ashok Vaidya, the force behind, and they came up this, this beautiful idea. And I think this is what the IMS stands for, because we all of us, you know, we have Dr. Rama, Dr. Ashok as our mentors, and we are very fortunate because their outlook, Dr. Uh, I, we, I know Dr. Ulf Futian as a researcher, but uh, Dr. Rama and Dr. Ashok uh, perfect human beings and uh, you know there is so much that you can learn that, learn from them every time you meet them and this was the concept of Maitri which is not restricted to vesemota symptoms not restricted to hormone therapy because whenever you used to speak about hormone therapy in the even in the 90s and up to the WHI it was always thought about vesemota symptoms and hormone therapy but even at that time they had the vision that aging is not hormone therapy aging is not vesemota symptoms it has to be interdisciplinary and I remember even in the IMS, there was a huge debate when some of the uh, some of the uh, you know non IMS uh, the newcomers had come in uh, because IMS is open not only to the medical personnel but to the non medical person. Anybody can become a member. Anybody who is going to work in the interest of the midlife woman and the aging woman are welcome to join the organization. Unlike most of our uh, you know the hardcore clinical uh, um, uh, societies, because menopause is different. 
And this is how they have promoted. And uh, uh, the Maitri has done a wonderful job and they have a huge database of women whom they have treated during this period. And this is how we run, I run my menopause clinic and I've been running for the past 15, 17 years. And I think every area, so I would consider myself actually, uh, you know, uh, a single center, but since it's not a corporate hospital, the across uh, the, the uh, interdisciplinary is always, you know, with uh, your friends who are spread out and you send whenever, whenever you have a problem with the diabetes, you send to them to the endocrinologist. So that is how you can run your menopause clinic. And it is very, very simple. You just need very simple tools very simple things to uh, run a menopause clinic and i just wanted to you know bring this slide this slide was something which i picked up what i had presented in 2005 uh, when jyoti did the national congress at uh, uh, there and that is that is the when you know uh, that was one of the first times i had put up the slides that we should be having menopause clinics akin to the antenatal clinics, what you're seeing on both the sides. The middle picture is the one, and the other two are the antenatal clinics, which we are already running. And I'm so happy that 2021, from 2005, the vision was on, but at least now, we are, you know, having this menopause clinics, and this is this is how actually uh, we one of those few couple of slides that we have had over there. And um, I remember Urvashi was very impressed with this bradyphrenia in that as to what is the meaning of bradyphrenia in menopausal symptoms, and actually what is mean what it really means is emotional slowdown, and what we really have when you're going through menopause. And so I thank Dr. Ambuja and thank Dr. Vaidya for sharing this slide because this year we have started. There are so many menopause clinics which have started all across India. That means it is implementation of a thought process which has taken years, but then I think a good job done because we are doing it slowly and steadily. And this is the entire group we always you know put up the slide to thank all of them for having started this menopause clinic. And this actually becomes a book for uh, the CIMP exam. And the guidelines are important. And this is the fifth in the series. Dr. Urveshi spearheaded the first series of this uh, clinical practice guideline. And the third, uh, Sonia was very actively involved in the third one. And she did the third one and the fourth and fifth, uh, uh, which have, we have done. And the 2020 is the latest guidelines on menopause. So the aim of a clinic is to offer a comprehensive, friendly service under one roof for the care of climactric and geriatric women. So it's not just menopause, but then you are, you know, leading them on. So these uh, uh, menopause clinics are meant to be dedicated to meet the unique and changing medical needs of women from menopause through the years. So menopause clinic, you need the core team, you need an examination table, just like, and this was actually written the first time Jyoti Uni had written about what do we need in a menopause clinic in the IMS newsletter, and it still holds good. There is no change in the requirement. And we have this menopause performer, that means you need documentation right from 2007. We have been half on you have to document and you have to call these women back every six months one year and document and maintain the documents so there are two types of level of care the primary care and the secondary care and these are the primary care unit the multidisciplinary care unit and i'm not going into the details because it's all there on the website it is all there in the pdf which you can download um, from the jmh website april 2020 the pdf uh, uh, of the guidelines that we have the executive summary and the book is of course there on the website which you can uh, you know the pdf can be bought and the textbook also can be bought and this is the uh, dexa machine that we really need if you want a complete one you need some you need the mammogram you need a dexa you and the colposcope and the hysteroscope when you're looking after these kind of women these are the extra things that you can have uh, but you can of course the primary care may not need it but as you grow uh, having all these instruments, which I have elaborated, would really help in giving you a complete picture on how to run a menopause clinic. And these are very simple charts. These are the risk assessment charts that we will need to look after the bone health, the BMI, the uh, uh, the, the WH, the cardio cardiovascular problems. And I think uh, Dr. Ambuja and Dr. Sudha have been talking about this in the uh, last two years. The risk assessment uh, scoring system we have been discussing uh, uh, all over uh, the two years so but very important at any level of care is documentation and record keeping and of course you can use the internet you can use the non-medical services also for these people because we are worried about the hair we are worried about the frontal balding we are about we are worried about the skin that happens 
And of course, you have to be emotionally involved and sexual therapy becomes important. And, you know, so there are so many areas which you can really work on at menopause clinic, but nothing short of uh, the counseling. And this is a picture which, you know, I used to have this regular kind of uh, demonstration. So what is the right kind of food and what is the kind of posture? What are the kind of exercises? Then I used to put up all these boards and, you know, explain to them. And uh, this is, I'm talking about 2007 and we have still, you know, keep, we still uh, do the counseling, which is very important. So for menopausal as a physician role, so you have to examine, you have to take the thing. And then finally you group this woman without menopausal symptoms with menopausal symptoms on your mind and that's how we say and then you go through them and uh, you know so i'm not going to talk about this um the staging and then the how you're going to take it forward you're going to ask about the calcium and what are the good things so implementation is very very important risk assessment modules you have these are the ones that we do mm, uh, a very important i think is indication for dexa so you should know when you should be sending your patient for dexa if you're able to have one if you don't have an access to dexa even the ultrasound calcanium is good enough for your screening and of course the risk factors are always there but but never forget to do these kind of things. A breast examination, never forget to do a breast examination. Never forget to look at the pH. This is a very simple kit <coughs> that you can just take that urinary strip, put it there in the vagina, and you know what's happening over there. <coughs> so in this one, that is the first time where Dalen and Wang called midlife in women as a critical window of opportunity for prevention of diseases. <coughs> so this is one of the posters that we have had that it is not just about, you know, your physical health, mind your food, mind your body, mind your mind, mind your sleep, mind your emotions and mind your soul. And then you are happy like this, like this Utpala group of senior doctors that we have in Hyderabad. So Hepsiva had come out with this beautiful <coughs> app. All of you can use it in your clinic. This is a one type app. That means it doesn't give you a long term documentation, but it definitely helps for your clinic. You can try using that. And of course, we have to start thinking about, uh, you know, collective efforts. So this Indian Midlife Registry, we have floated and it is open to all our IMS members. Anybody can join the registry and there are a lot of benefits in doing that for you and as well as for your patients. So uh, the IMS member is teamwork is the ability to, to work together. And this is what it is showing. Even if you're far away, you can eat together just because of this kind of a approach that we have that is the webinars. So it is a and teamwork is the fuel that propels common people to achieve uncommon goals. So to my mind and to my uh, involvement in the Indian menopause society is if you really want to live a happy life tied to a goal. And my ikigaya was IMS and IMS and IMS. And that is how I think I'm happy at the end of the day. And uh, so these are a couple of pictures, uh, you know, uh, uh, the stalwarts uh, who are doing fantastic jobs. So many unsung heroes in the IMS family who never come, who are never on the stage, but off stage, I can tell you there's so many of them who are constantly seen at the IMS meetings and who do a wonderful job. Thank you one and all. And thank you, Pratiba, for giving me the opportunity to speak on this topic. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. Thank you, ma'am, for a wonderful lecture. I request Aarti, ma'am, to give a concluding remarks. Ma'am, please unmute yourself. Aarti, ma'am, please unmute yourself. Thank you, Dr. Meeta. It was a wonderful presentation. And the most important thing which I felt in the last few years, uh, Till I have joined the IMS. I think it's a very long time when I have joined the IMS. But what I feel is this, that all of us are still lacking in the health of the uh, menopausal women or the women who are beyond 50 years of the age. In my OPD, most of the times females are coming who are having so many problems related to the menopause. And because of our antenatal services, we are neglecting them. Neglecting them. So I think we should take full care of these women. And uh, one thing which I feel is this, I have organized a camp yesterday. And in that camp, so many women are there. I have done that exercise scan and all the menopausal tests in that. And I have a lot of the tests after this camp. Every year I am organizing this camp and I am getting so many women. And in this camp, we, I am also inviting all the members of Club 35 Plus for yearly checkup. So this is a way, I think this should be done at every place. 
so that at least we can uh, provide them uh, some services which are at very low cost and we can screen them so in my view we should start this and this is very important that all of us i mean our doctor faculty should take the care of these menopausal women otherwise i have seen the women who are at the age of the 50 or the age of the 55 they looks like it at the age of the 70 so uh, this is very important and we all of should keep in our mind and uh, this lecture is uh, very encouraging and Uh, will give us enthusiasm to do all the to things start. thank you dr meeta thank you enthusiasm to start such type of clinic at our place also now i am doing for last so many years uh, dr patiba oh, and for, i have got such for, a good yeah. response and yeah for me i am thinking of starting in this is the camp in which i have uh, registered by 1800 patient in one single yeah. camp so i have a very hey. good number of the patients and very good care of these by the uh, so many doctors yeah of every every specialty including from the nutritionist to every branch wonderful madam uh, sudarshan ma'am would you like to uh, have, yeah. give so, your remarks thank you thank you very much uh, dr meeta for an excellent overview you know you have told us all about ims all about uh, you know uh, how to set up a menopause clinic and how important it is in today's life and i agreed totally with dr arti that we have to look into it we have to you know take care of these females and i have also been doing you know these menopausal camps uh, from you know long time back and you know i have been uh, you know screening them and taking out a lot of data from these and you can you know publish paper out of it from our own indian uh, you know scenario uh, which all of us are lacking i think indian data is lacking yes. so uh, hats off to dr meeta for doing great job uh, you know not only in this presentation for doing otherwise also in midlife registry and in doing all the multi centric research work so thank you so much thank you thank you, thank you sudha ma'am thank Now, you ma'am so wonderful yeah uh, thank you chairperson sanj meeta ma'am for a wonderful lecture Uh, we'll be ending the session and start a new one. It reminds me of a common thought of a woman at a perimenopausal and menopausal age group that our mothers never told us that there'd be days like this. You think they took a vow of silence anyway? I think somebody needs to make a kit like the one they gave out in sixth grade, the pads and belts. Something happens to girls; it's normal," said the booklet. Don't be afraid. I need a book like that with homey pearls of woman wisdom. for the later stage we need clinics light days also and sage advice about the menopause question about hrt or not soya or calcium and could you please throw some light and i think dr meeta singh ma'am had really justified it and she has guided us very well about how to go and set up a menopausal clinic and to be all inspired that every week we have a menopause clinic and like aarti ma'am take a huge camp with multi speciality and have documentation of it and have a own registry and get to know and uh, do a betterment for the menopausal woman so uh, thank you everyone thank you pratima ma'am for giving me an opportunity to be yeah. a part of it yeah gayatri there is one surprise quiz question also after this yeah so yeah, yeah we have the surprise question quiz after this is the clinical practice guidelines on menopause so uh, we are going to have this and i'll ask dr ashurani ma'am to conduct the uh, for the proceeding so she will uh, actually it. this uh, we have uh, we have floated one quiz and in this we will be presenting this book uh, actually not this book we will be presenting the clinical practice guidelines on menopause 2020 which has been written by dr meeta madam and also on the osteoporosis so the person who is going to answer the quiz first will be getting those books so can i have the question surprise quiz question yes. yes yeah uh, good evening ma'am thank you dr gayatri i would like to thank dr pratibha singh ma'am for giving me the opportunity uh, just, a minute, uh, just a minute ashu first we'll have this surprise quiz okay so okay. this is the question the most characteristic symptom of menopause is hot hot flushes it varies from women to women mood swings or vaginal dryness and painful intercourse so you have to answer this and you can win that book
Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Now the result will be announced in the next uh, webinar. And uh, now over to Dr. Uh, Ashu. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, the session three is we are going to have an interesting debate. And the topic of the debate is, is it feasible to set up a menopause clinic by the gynecologist? Our esteemed judges are Dr. Anita Shah, ma'am. And I feel honored to introduce Dr. Anita Shah, ma'am. She's a practicing gynecologist in Surat since 1988. She has been the president of the Surat Orbs and Gyne Society in 2000 and 2021, when SOX received the Best Society's Trophy from Foxy. She is the organizing secretary of the National Conference of the Indian Menopause Society, IMSCON, 2009 in Surat. Founder Chapter Secretary, Indian Menopause Society, Surat Chapter, and National Chairperson Committee, IMS. Ex-Secretary General of the Indian Menopause Society, 2020 to 2021. She has participated as a faculty in many state, national, and international conferences. She has received the Star Award from Surat Ops and Gyne Society twice in 2020 and 2021. She is the president-elect Surat Medical Consultants Association, 2022. Welcome, ma'am. Our next yes. second judge is Dr. Jyotika A. Desai, ma'am. She is a senior consultant, Dr. P. R. Desai Hospital, Bangalore, DNB Teaching Faculty, Bangalore, past president, Bangalore Society, 2013-14, Past President Bangalore Menopause Society 2016 to 20, Foxy South Zone Quiz Coordinator from 2012 to 2021, Honorary Secretary ISOPA Bangalore Chapter, Scientific Chairperson EICOG 2019 Bangalore, Organizing Chairperson IMSCON 2020 Bangalore, Lifetime Achievement Award in 2017 from Bangalore Society of Ops and Gyne, Unsung Hero Award. 2019 from IIRH in life 2019. We have two debaters, Dr. Lakshmi Ratha ma'am and Dr. Sangeeta Pahava ma'am. They have eight minutes each and two minutes reboot time. I request Dr. Anita Singh ma'am to welcome Dr. Lakshmi Ratha ma'am. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much dear Ashu for your kind words. And Thank thanks a lot, uh, dear Pratibha. I have uh, really uh, observed your this uh, webinar and your uh, know the legion trees and everything for the first time. But it is really superb, superb, superb. I think I missed all your previous episodes. So if you are having recording, then I would like to watch them also. Yeah, definitely we have recording. Right, right. Uh, all my dignitaries of uh, my IMS family members, I won't uh, put the name of all, uh, but uh, Dr. Meeta has just given a very lovely talk regarding uh, uh, menopause, uh, how to set a menopause clinic. And uh, you know that during this year, Dr. Ambuja Madam and Dr. Sudha have just started, I can say the uh, leak to so many uh, starting of menopause clinics at so many states and cities. So, Today, we are just having a very good debate regarding is a gynecologist can uh, set the menopause clinic. And for that, uh, we are having two very eminent uh, debate speakers. Uh, Dr. Lakshmi Ratna, I would like to introduce her. Uh, she's a senior consultant, Apollo Cardi Hospitals, Jubilee Hills, Hyderabad. You all know very well that currently she is the joint secretary of uh, Indian Menopause Society, and uh, I can say right and left hand of Dr. Ambuja, madam. She is working so hard for our Indian Menopause Society that everyone is knowing. Uh, she is uh, first to start so many things in the state, colposcopy directed leaf procedures, thermal ablation, laser treatment for endometrial hyperplasia, abdominal circulation. First to start Club 35 Plus in Hyderabad sector. 
He is a, a laparoscopic surgeon and had advanced ultrasound colposcopy training for uh, from UK. Uh, credential menopausal practitioner. She uh, is a peer review of Journal of Midlife Health, which is a very important, excellent journal of uh, Indian Menopause Society. She is a vice president of uh, Upla Hyderabad, past president of Hyderabad chapter also, and is a recipient of so many awards. I, <laughs> I will not waste time Thank for uh, leveling all of them. You can just read over here. Uh, Thank so you. Lakshmi, the stage is yours. Uh, we Thank like you. To Thank you, Dr. Anita. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank you all the great stalwarts, international and national, who made a path for us juniors to carry on this menopausal science, really. I mean, hats off to each one. The way Dr. Sunila has spoken about Dr. Ulf Putin and the Mita. I mean, there's so many great heads are there. We are nothing in front of them. That's what I feel. And Pratiba, thank you very much for inviting me. I didn't want to cancel this because it's the first time you've called me. And I don't want my unhealth should be, I mean, damaged that this great webinar. I have been seeing your knowledge update. It's such a high class webinar you are conducting. Congratulations. Uh, now, I just asked, I had a doubt, should I go very academically for this menopause clinics? Because if academically I have to go, I said, I don't want to give because I am a practicing menopause specialist. And I have to say that for gynecologists, when Pratiba has told me that I have to debate for, for gynecologists, not the specialist. So I put to make just a general interest in this debate. So shall we, we will start. I will start uh, sharing the screen now. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Anita, for all the good and kind words you have told me. Uh, thank you very much. So can I, can, can in my slides are seen? Can my screen is seen? Yes, yes, but you have to make it for yes, yeah. ma'am. Sorry if there are any spelling mistakes because I was not doing good from last night. I just prepared this. Please forgive me if there are any spelling mistakes, any such things in the slides. Okay. Now, I am speaking on the behalf of a gynecologist to, to start and run the menopausal clinics. The debate is that whether gynecologists can do or only a menopausal specialist should do. That is the debate. So in a routine gynecology clinic, we see so many patients coming with the various complaints, various problems. So it is a casual thing when a perimenopausal lady approaches us, we definitely, as a gynecologist, we don't have to be a perimenopausal specialist. We do talk about perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause, and what is a menopausal period. Then when should I go to the doctor for menopause? The lady can ask that. So it's worth talking to a GP if you have menopausal symptoms troubling you or if you are experiencing symptoms of the menopause before 45 years of age. And especially so less than 40 years, yes, we do. Now, when should I go to the doctor? This may be because there will be a lot of changes, but a GP definitely can talk to her and sort out the basic issues of her, whether these problems are entirely due to the hormonal deficiency or any other systematic problems. There are so many systems which can simulate the same symptoms, heart flushes, nitrates, difficulty sleeping, cognitive changes, memory loss. So we have to see as a gynecologist, we have to do the basic evaluation and tell them about the 10 common signs of menopause, all these things, and then ask her to follow the general rules. How can a doctor tell if you are going through menopause? We are all gynecologists. We are all past the MDDGOs. So when we finished our post-graduation, we know that how to diagnose a menopause, elevated follicle stimulating hormone levels on a two occasions with a one month gap, definitely. And she has to be at least 12 months 
amenorrhea. These things as a gynecologist, definitely I can tell her and make her understand more. Certain common facts about food, because this is the most common thing the patient has about food. And especially it is not only for menopause, our advice on food and exercise, PCOS, obesity, metabolic syndrome, hypertension, diabetes, everything, this is a common thing. So we can definitely talk about the food and the exercises. Uh, for our menopausal women. And also we can definitely talk about this, what to avoid, like a processed food, spicy food, fast food, alcohol, caffeine, and the fatty meals. So what food is good for menopause, they will ask. So as a gynecologist, definitely I will talk about these things. And also if her daughter or an adolescent daughter is sitting and she's a PCO, she can also learn these things. What foods trigger? See the heart flushes. This is the most common symptom. You just can't say, now you go to this expert. We have to deal with, as a primary gynecologist, we have to talk about it and give her simple methods how to avoid hot foods, soups, stews. They may trigger hot flesh, focus on a cold temperature, especially on a hot weather. Eating a big meal or a one with the heavy food should not be there. So these kind of few things we can give. Now, how do you get rid of hot flesh this fast? So we have to give certain advices. Definitely a gynecologist is in a better position to have the accessibility and approachability and familiarity to talk about this. Sleep better, wear thin loose fitting clothes, or ambient temperature, avoid the alcohol and the other foods which trigger at night, caffeine, alcohol, things like that. Of course, lower your stress levels through meditation and trauma. Does drinking water help with hot flushes? Definitely, we will say. These are all the simple, simple um, suggestions, advices, which we can give without asking her to go to a um, uh, menopausal specialist. Almonds are great as a snack or topping for your favorite salad as rich in polyunsaturated. So we can definitely advise her. And the natural treatments of menopause symptoms, definitely we can say there are certain flax seeds are there, vitamin E is there, exercise, aerobic breathing, all these things. As a general advice, we can definitely give. The following tips can help you to transfer the menopause as a pleasant or a positive experience. You have to watch your thoughts. Be smiling, be positive. There is a growing evidence that the absence of positive thoughts has a greater negative impact on our health and well-being than does the presence of it. Laugh, laughter brings us closer to people, moves us into a more positive atmosphere. It can stimulate our immune system also. So that we can give a suggestion. Then also make time for yourself, exercise, eat right, and incorporate relaxation techniques. This as a original or usual gynecologist, easily you can tell her and the message goes directly to them because they are all well-known old patients of us for deliveries they must have come to us. So menopause clinics, talking menopause with your GP definitely uh, helps before going to a menopause specialist because I know that here, um, um, see, uh, sometimes uh, I'll come back to that slide. Um, um, are we there yet? We have to navigate now with our guided menopause too. You as a traffic in police or navigator, you should be, you have to know when to refer them to a gynecology. As a menopausal specialist, and what basic things as a gynecologist we can teach them. Now, uh, I think the time doesn't permit for this. We will. There are certain conditions, premature menopause and induced menopause. Why I am bringing this topic is because induced menopause describes which has happened suddenly with some surgery, some chemotherapy, some kind of a radiotherapy, anything. So we know the basic defect of that basic problem, medical issue of that lady. So after the treatment, whether it is surgery, radiotherapy or chemotherapy, we know that original condition and then we can concentrate more on that original condition, not only on the menopause problems. So induced menopause, you can anticipate as a gynecologist. Not just menopausal treatment, regular revaluation by healthcare practitioner is of a vital importance for women who experience induced menopause to monitor the condition that resulted in the induced menopause, ensure adequate symptom relief as needed, reassess the health status and the risks for disease, determine the best disease prevention treatment strategies. So she forms a basic person to direct this 
uh, lady with the menopausal symptoms. So mood swings, short-term memory loss. So a gynecologist who sees her earlier also, she can find out the difference, whether she's really or even right from beginning, she was like that. So this way, assessment will be much more easier by the treating routine gynecologist. Now, um, I, do I have time? If I... Do I have time? Yeah, two minutes you can take, madam. You can take complete. So getting older in a society that values youth, it can be very demoralizing for midlife women. They often experience changes in self-esteem and body image. So may begin to consider their own mortality and dwell on the meaning and the positiveness of their lives. So these people, regularly they can come to the gynecologist and talk about it. I am, I was like this, I was so happy before. See, now I am like this. Because we get to know their family. We are a treating gynecologist, maybe a gynec problem, maybe the obstetric deliveries we have conducted. So we are, as a gynecologist, in a better position for the accessibility of the uh, lady. And we have to talk to them, create balance. When dividing time between work obligations and caring family, women need to remember that taking care of their own needs is very important. With the onset of new tensions, recognizing problem, I mean, there are new coping mechanisms we have to find out. So we have to keep balance between self, family, friends, and work allows women to meet the challenges and maintain the self-confidence. Nothing like that. We have to boost the self-confidence and the positive attitude in our own old gynec patient. The bottom line, hormone therapy, it's an acceptable option for the relatively young, that is between within 10 years of the menopause and healthy women who are bothered by moderate to severe menopausal symptoms can use this. And individualization is the key in the decision to use hormone. And when there are complex situations, definitely these persons we can um, refer to the medical uh, menopausal specialist. Medical organizations devoted to the care of menopausal women agree that there is no question that hormone therapy has an important role in managing symptoms for the women during the menopause transition and early menopause. So the solidarity of this statement is from the North American Menopause. American Society for Reproductive Medicine and the Endocrine Society. So there is definitely a role for the hormonal therapy and we have to discreet when to refer them. Okay, so menopause is not an illness. We have to tell her it's a natural part of life, though its symptoms can be difficult to deal with. Eating the right diet and exercising and developing a positive attitude, it may help alleviate and prevent them. So menopause clinics, um, our consultant obstetrician and gynecologist who is experienced with the academic interest and is fully registered with our medical councils is eligible to do like the symptoms in this uh, slide all those uh, letters uh, blocks are there here and there that is the woman comes with the basic gynecologist the clutter of symptoms she doesn't know where to fit them she says uh, heart pressure she says joint pain she says skin changes she says mouth problem Gynecologist can see as a globally, all the systems, not only as a menopause, she can examine and put it as a, like a neatly as a menopause, the blocks are there. So we are the path, uh, we show the path for the lady who are having a confused mindset uh, with all these symptoms. So an initial consultation with the gynecologist is very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request Dr. Jyotika ma'am to introduce our next debater, Dr. Sangeeta Bhava ma'am. Uh, thank you, Achu. Uh, this is a very pleasant uh, duty for me. Thank you, Dr. Pratiba, for inviting me. I've been seeing how beautifully you have conducted the whole webinar today in the, in the company of such stalwarts. Thank you once again about uh, in the, introducing Dr. Sangeeta. She's a professor and HOD in uh, SRGD Medical College, Amritsar. She's an external and internal examiner of UG and PG, so various universities. And also she is a, a guide for most of her postgraduates. She is the founder and president of Amritsar Menopause Society, which was established recently in March, 2021. 
She has had many first prizes to her credit, 25 to 30 publications in national and international journals. And her area of interest is gynec oncology, infertility, endoscopy, and high risk pregnancy. Apart from this, I have seen Sangeeta Bhava very, uh, very much as a committed uh, menopause specialist in the Indian Menopause Registry, which we attend every Wednesday from 9 to 10. Yeah. So we have a lot of fun and uh, Sangeeta is part of that fun. So let us see what Sangeeta Lakshmi Ratna spoke very well about the menopause clinic being looked after by a gynecologist. Now let us see what Sangeeta has to say about a menopause clinic only by a menopause specialist. Over to you, Sangeeta. Thank you, Jyotika, ma'am, for giving such a nice end of mine and so kind words. And my special thanks goes to Dr. Anita Shah, ma'am, who helped me in starting this Menopause Society in March 2021. Uh, we started this. Ma'am, you remember the day? Anita, ma'am? It was 29th March when we started this uh, Menopause Society under Indian Menopause Society with the help of Anita Shah, ma'am. My so special thanks to Anita, ma'am, for uh, giving your mm -hmm. help to me. Sangeeta is Ma such an enthusiastic person, no? So <laughs> within a very short period, we uh, she decided and uh, yes, she fulfilled all the commitment and we started, yeah. She and, uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, full karo, full screen. My... yes, ma'am. Full screen, karo. Full, full screen, karo. yeah. Okay, ma'am. It's not done. Yes. I, yes, oh, yes. Good evening, everyone. And my I convince my special regards to all my seniors, my colleagues, and my juniors. Today, topic given to me is very tough. Uh, Lakshmi ma'am has rightly said that I am working since a long and I am the practicing menopause specialist. So she can very uh, easily say that it is the domain of the gynecologist. But as I have started this society in 2021, so I'm just like a kid in this uh, menopause clinics. So when I think about myself, that do I have sufficient knowledge about menopause then my answer from my side is no, I am having not sufficient knowledge in one year, but I have learned a lot from all my stalwarts, like Jyotika ma'am is rightly saying, Dr. Meeta ma'am, Dr. Jyotika ma'am, always we are meeting every Wednesday and we are giving such a crystal clear view of all the things that it's looking really interesting for me to work in this menopause and helping the menopausal females to get rid of their symptoms. But we need so many people. Menopause is the end of menstruation. Greek word mens meaning monthly and pauses means cessation. Menopause is a part of women's natural aging when her ovaries produce lower levels of the estrogen as well as progesterone, which hormones are the domain of endocrinologists and when no longer able to become pregnant. It is due to the ovarian follicular activity. To better understand the state of the menopause, an endocrinologist and gynecology is the best combination and more education of menopause medicine, especially in field of the hormonal as well as non-hormonal therapy, bone health, metabolic syndrome, heart disease are the issues of the utmost importance in menopausal females. So we are in need of the other specialists also. Phases of menstruation, as we all know, premenopause, perimenopause, menopausal, postmenopausal. So lack of the hormones causes many changes in the woman's physiology that affect their health and well-being. Symptoms are due to the changes in the metabolism of the body. Is it not the domain of the cardiologist? Yes. If I am having cardiologists around me, definitely as a gynecologist, I will take help of the cardiologist. As an obstetrician, 
we are always chuckling with when to create babies when not to create baby when to go for the breastfeeding even when i am seeing the mci whole the uh, syllabus in residency also only 20% of the syllabus is covered about the menopause and most of the topics of the obstetrics antenatal intrapartum postpartum so even our obstetrics and gynae residents are not happy with the menopause and they used to say that obstetrics is the bread and butter of our obstetricians and if a patient of the cesarean is coming in their hands in the private practice they will get more money instead of the menopause so first of all they should be told that it's not like that just like antenatal clinics we should be dedicated to the gynecologist so we are still far behind so i will include the cardiologist also for treating the cvs problem which is the as obstetrician and gynecologists not having enough knowledge about the connection between menopause and cvs diseases particularly heart attack which is the leading killer of the older women we need a joint approach osteoporosis is it not a domain of the orthopedician because there is calcium loss from the bone increasing resulting in the loss of the bone density and they are daily tackling with these problems i think they have much better knowledge than the gynecologist no doubt as gynecologists we can treat at the base level but definitely we are in need of the obstetrician as in the institute i will definitely take help of the orthopedician if a patient of the osteoporosis is coming in my hand after doing all my assessment i will be happy to refer her to the orthopedic people a domain of urologist nowadays aesthetic is coming and urogynec is coming so it is somewhat different from the gynecologist because fellowships are coming further so it is a super specialty i will not say it is sub specialty it is just like super specialty as the estrogen levels decreases the tissue lining of the urethra and bladder is becoming drier thinner and less elastic this can lead to lead to increased frequency of passing urine as well as increased tendency to develop uti and sometimes we are referring to the urologist and they are doing their endoscopies if patient is not getting their symptoms totally free the domain of the dermatologist estrogen is associated with an increased collagen production skin hydration thickness and wound healing glossis its elasticity is becoming thin hair loss increase after menopause as estrogen increase in the time spent in the growing phase so derma people is required for the help it's a domain of auto rhino laryngitis ent persons because one time a patient of menopause came to me and her voice was deeper and hoarse so she said to me that you are a gynecologist why you are not referring me to the ent person i refer her to the ent person they did so well counseling of the patient that even this is the field of the endocrinologist but they did wonder after counseling the patient that it is because of the hormones this is if they acting on the vocal cords and one male was standing there then they told her all the physiology that males are having voice deeper because of this and females are having a voice sweeter than because of this this is domain of the endocrinologist per se hot flushes because endocrinologist can better understand the whole metabolism of the body menopause can act like bread and butter for hormone specialists who pack her office to get the helpful conditions their gynecologist don't want to address the domain of the psychologist because there is problem with the key neuro protectors so it is the domain of the psychologist people also because psychologist changes are mainly manifested by the headache irritability fatigue depression and insomnia and there is diminished interest in the sex because of the emotional upset and maybe secondary the painful intercourse due to a dry vagina if it is because of emotional upset definitely psychologists do a wonder a domain of the diet and dietitian and physiotherapist even we ourselves are taking help from the dietitian and physiotherapy people weight increase is more likely to be a result of the irregular food habits because of the mood swings there is more deposition of the fat around the hips waist and buttocks a healthy diet as jyoti uh, ma'am has already said that what is the diet which we can't tell to the gynecologist but as i am having dietitian in my institute 
definitely i used to take help of the dietitian in my institute and physiotherapist also having in my workplace the domain of the oncologist because in our institute as oncology department is attached with us so many patients are referred to us which are coming with the post menopausal bleeding and it's now hell that patients of the endometrial ca ovarian cancer and breast cancer are coming and even in so, so many people we are watching that breast cancer endometrial cancer combination together are coming now it is to pace up with the menopause you and me start hrt but it can increase the risk of the breast cancer endometrial cancer and no doubt hrt is not going to increase the cervical cancer but as the patients are coming in the menopause stage that i will take help of the oncologist and even onco surgeon every females ovary will age and will stop producing estradiol each pair person reacts differently to the backlogs and for menopause management there is no package that can be given to all women so it is a collab collaborative network of the subspecialties from the cardiology to neurology as well as worst in the new senses of the menopause and she had nutritionist on call also it has been comprehensively inculcated in the medical curriculum and residency training its specialty and is different from the ops in gynae as surgery is from pediatrics rather it is a super specialty as fellowships are coming in uh, in this branch so because of the fragmentation of the women healthcare is leading to the untreated symptoms and serious impact of the women health i believe women deserves a provider who can understand menopause definitely gynecologist can understand menopause and then we can go for the multidisciplinary approach beware the menopausal fairy at first she steals your figure then she steals your sleep next your mood your patience your eyesight even i people i will take help of and finally eats up our brain all she leaves you with with is a lousy mosquito muffin top or flushes it is skin 10 million moods memory and endless need for naps coffee wine and cards so tenly menopause is a natural biological event but many women do not respond differently do respond differently and may need intervention by a healthcare provider to help optimize the quality of their life thank you so much for giving me this time thank you. and for patience here uh, thank you dr jyotika and now both the debaters have emphasized their points very beautifully and i now request the judges to give their point of view uh i should no we yeah. have to reboot uh, uh, then i have to I, actually uh, lakshmi madam if you want to reboot if you want to have something you can talk two minutes yes yeah, no, no. very well said my opponent definitely we need all the different fields consultants but as i again stressed that gynecologist is the first step a patient faces whom she believes so the initial consultation always a better consultation and chance to win her confidence and trust before labeling her all these problems which my colleague had just now said so basic data and the family history are so very important already the gynec must be aware of the maximum information about her patient and also she would jot down all those problems and make ready all the data information about her among young and premenopausal gives her a little boost and the feeling of well because they when they come to the gynec clinic they will be seeing all the conglomeration of the patient it is not only the geriatric patient she will sulk down here in a normal gynecologist op there are various people with the various colors so among young and premenopausal she will feel little lack to and she will like to become one of them like one of the premenopausal or a reproductive period like a lady who is nicely glowing and then uh, attending the clinic so rather than in a sulky atmosphere uh seeing all the people with all the so many different different problems um i think a gynecologist op is much better for the basic evaluation 
the basic evaluation by gynecologist saves a lot of time for the menopausal specialist. Time and energy, she will make a good chart, good all the information, and then she sends because she will be cornering what exactly her problem rather than all that clutter of symptoms. Now, she will feel happy and free of inhibition on seeing her routine family gynecologist, and it will help her to share her personal matters. Already the doctor must have conducted her deliveries or in certain circumstances, she herself must have delivered by that gynae. Like I am delivering the daughters now so that they will know a lot of confidence in that. And definitely they will respect us. Now, can treat her non-menopausal related problems. It's not only the menopause. There may be so many other things. So you can actually, for example, this is an ovarian cyst. So related symptoms or associated symptoms also, she can get the treatment from the gynecologist. Now, gynecologist will have a global outlook. It's just not only, only the menopause. She will see from top to bottom and all other areas. So she will have a global outlook on her presenting symptoms and can easily do the differential diagnosis and can give an apt treatment modality or give a correct suggestion to whom she should make it. Patients may come with a lot of doubts, confusion, unknown fears. The gynecologist and basic consultation with the gynecologist sort out the clutter in a systematic manner, documents the data so that expert can indeed go through in a focused manner. Treating gynecologists can anticipate menopausal problems by uh, treating the patient, like example, recurrent endometriosis. She knows the recurrent endometriosis are going to eat up the ovarian tissue and ultimately she will land with the premature ovarian menopause, either medically or naturally with the endometriosis or a surgery or any, any other treatment. So you know that you can guide her, you can explain her beforehand so she would be in a better situation to accept, accept the therapy. Now, biggest help is in inducing menopause, as I have already said, the gynecologist can monitor the condition even after treating the menopause, whatever the original cause for her uh, sudden induced premature menopause. And the most important thing is accessibility of the gynecologist. People living in villages, I know that um, Dr. Ambuja Madam has started these clinics in the medical college to reach the unmet needs of the people who are in rural college. But suppose in a rural village where there is no medical college, but definitely a gynecologist will exist. So she cannot say that you go to the menopausal specialist, you go to that doctor, this doctor. She will do the basic evaluation and give her the basic treatment. Lastly, but not the least, a gynecologist can be a path shower to the menopausal patient with an, when an expert opinion is definitely needed after the uh, necessary basic treatment. Thank you. Dr. Sangeeta, you have something to say now to rebut what Dr. Lakshmi has said? Unmute yourself. No, ma'am, Lakshmi ma'am has nicely said that uh, gynecologist is the person uh, to refer to the other specialist. But if we are having specialists, then we should take advantage of them. Until unless patient is going to have heart attack or something, or morbid conditions that we will lose the patient. So in that case, we should take opinion of the other people when fractures are coming and then heart attack, uh, patient is dying. So we should take the help at least if we are having these persons in our hand. No doubt in villages when there are no patient uh, person like that, then uh, uh, we can uh, give them path where to go and uh, what in our hand we should do our best. So you believe that the patient should be treated only by a specialist? No, ma'am. It's not like only specialist. It's not only the domain of the gynecologist. It's, uh, it's a, 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 not right to say, is it the domain of the gynecologist? It is not only the domain of the gynecologist. We should yeah. say like this. Yeah. We have to have a combination of it. Definitely yes. when it is needed. We That's have why we are encouraging direct. all the uh, gynecologists to uh, enter and give the exams of credential yes. menopause specialist. 
yes because yes, yes and the yes. the charts which were developed by all the right. dr meeta and all they're so helpful and Wonder. so simple also yes, we sir. can just put on our desktop as a gynecologist we can give off hand knowledge just and then for further further information definitely that particular modality either an orthopedic or a neurologist whatever that we have to channelize the patient yeah. so we have to reach a wide media between the two so it's not as if uh, dr lakshmi has won or dr sangeeta has lost no it is not like that we need both of them to amalgamate so that they first come to lakshmi and after lakshmi has seen the patient she will refer to sangeeta in case the patient requires specialist therapy yes sir okay. wonderful i think both of you did a good job thank you yeah, yeah. thank you thank you thank you dr pratibha and, and first dr. of all uh, that's why as a gynecologist we always encourage our patients that as you are celebrating your birthday your anniversary every year you should get yourself screened by especially a gynecologist once a year so that you can come across so many preventive disorders or disease that can be prevented uh, from major illness and that's I why uh, our perfect. slogan then only our people will remain fit at 40 strong at 60 and independent at 80 what we have elaborated it to fit at uh, 40 fancy at 50 strong at 60 sexy at 70 independent at 80 not at 90 and healthy at 100 yeah. and we wish yeah. all the female should like healthy at 100 uh only if they are taking care of themselves they should uh, and you know that uh, for last two years indian menopause society is bombarding webinars so so many things are repeated ne we are just hitting so many topics so that most of the gynecologists and most of the female uh, practitioners have started treating their patients in a definitely better better way Yeah, you are totally right, Anita. Last two years, we have had so many menopause webinars. So yeah. what I think we should do is have posters of fit at fit at forty and all that. And the, the, at the bottom, you must write, find out, ask the doctor how, so that you know they get an idea that maybe they can be smart too. So why yeah. not ask the doctor yeah. about it? Put yeah. a poster there, tell us more about it. So that way, you know, you'll sort of uh, get some interest. in these ladies so they'll come and ask you themselves instead of you telling them all the time very good yeah, very nice i'll, I'll request meeta madam i want to give some inputs meeta hello i would like to tell i'm dr tarlika i'm 90 years old i'm still fit and working everywhere <laughs> very nice yeah madam is one of the senior most gynecologist of surat meeta you and must have seen her madam when you had been to surat <laughs> Yes, and madam, yes. the one thing is that she is already always attending yoga classes. She is with yeah, us yeah, in yoga yeah. classes. Yeah, yeah, right, so right. Wonderful, right. Tarlika, Tarlika, madam. <laughs> Hats off to Doctor Tarlika, uh, Tarlika madam, because she is here and she is there till the end of the seminar. That itself shows her enthusiasm, which I think the all the youngsters can really oh, hear. Right, oh, right, God. right. Enthusiastic. She is very enthusiastic for even attending all the CMEs also, Meeta madam. No, no, that is what it's wonderful, and that's why she's fit. Fit right, is not right. fit, like yeah. it's not just the uh, number. No, it is your mind and your physical. Uh, right, exactly, body. exactly. Yeah. So I think I I think actually Dr. Gokani sums it all. We don't have to talk more. We just have to follow what she has been doing. And right. only when we follow, then we can do what Jyotika said. Put up that poster. How? Yeah. How? Unless we do it, unless we do it, we cannot. We cannot put up that poster, Jyoti. Ka, hai na? Right. Yeah. So all that poster. All of us follow you by video. Baby icons. That <laughs> by video. Yes, Meeta ma'am. These assessment tools are really wonderful and interesting. Yes, Very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Yes. Yeah, that is. That's why we try to make it as simple as possible, so that you know more people start adapting it. And it is not only the doctors; even the paramedical can actually do it. So you don't. Even if you're very busy, you just ask your sister to do it, or any non-clinical person to do the risk assessment. You know, and ask maybe after some time, the uh, uh, patient herself fills up the form and comes. Because simple language, no. 
Uh, when we, I mean, I was feeling on the breast risk assessment. When yes. it is coming low risk, a eye will be a different color. Ah, absolutely. Yeah. See, that is that is the reality when you're doing a reality. screen. You no, know, and you start enjoying it. Like I told in my talk, you know, from a very exciting field of obstetrics where the adrenal rush is there, or a laparoscopic surgeon, but doing your uh, menopause clinic also gives you a lot of satisfaction. And especially you know because I do my ultrasounds, it is it is really amazing when you do your ultrasound, your hysteroscopy, and you combine the everything all together, and also the bone health. So you see everything of that woman. Yes. Yeah. You get yeah. the bigger one right? because you are in menopause yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But you know, all my uh, colleagues in Hyderabad, when I was working, uh, uh, you know, I was probably just about thirty-five or thirty-seven when I started working on menopause. So all of them used to laugh at me. He, what? There, who is me? What interest in menopause? Menopause, karte rehti. Ja gayi wahi. You are talking about menopause. So it's like years since I've been talking about. But I'm, I was always genuinely interested in old people. I think. In fact, I used to tell my husband that we should start a geriatric hospital. so maybe it's your interest basically you know and that drives you to do what you really wish to do so thank you all so much thank you pratibha and i think all of us have had a really a long day thank you everybody for being with us and uh, can we have a poll question on the yeah yeah the debate is still on and yeah. we have the poll question and the thank question is support please put the question thank you i support please put the question yeah the question is is it feasible to set up a menopause clinic by a gynecologist yes or no yes 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 yes, <laughs> yes. yes. it yes. should be by yes. the gynecologist only uh, yes you can give your answer yes. yeah oh my god <laughs> so pratibha i think uh, uh, you have one hands down hands down you know Hundred <laughs> percent so people have answered yes. 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 No, no, no. 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 No, no, and my sincere gratitude to our viewers who have joined today from far and wide thank you so much for joining and uh, i think it must be a great experience for all of you first of all i would like to thank our guest dr cm bhuja madam dr shobhna uh, mohandas madam dr pushpa sethi madam dr sunila khandelwal madam and dr sajosh for their gracious presence thanks for accepting our invitation and sharing your views with us and i am really indebted to dr meeta singh madam for such wonderful deliberation which has had, which has made many things clear and i'm sure many of us will get an idea how to set pratima ma'am you are not audible you are not audible Can you hear me now? Hello. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 So thank you so much. It was a wonderful experience today, and uh, just switch it off. Huh? And uh, it was very good to interact with all of you. And my sincere gratitude to our viewers who have joined today from far and wide. Thank you so much for joining, and I hope you all must have had a great experience today. And I am thankful to our guest, Doctor. <laughs> Sri Ambuja Madam, Dr. Shobhna Madam, Dr. Pushpa Sethi Madam, Dr. Sunila Khandelwal Madam, Dr. Sajush for their gracious presence. Thank you for accepting our invitation and sharing views with us. And now I am indebted to Dr. Meeta Singh Madam for such wonderful deliberation today, which has made many things clear. And I am sure many of us will get an idea to how to set up a menopause clinic for our ailing and neglected patient. So thank you so much, madam, for sharing your knowledge and uh, time with us. Thank you so much. I also want to uh, thank our chairpersons and judges, Dr. Sudha Sharma, madam, Dr. Anita Shah, madam, Dr. Arthi Gupta, madam, Dr. Jyoti Ka Desai, ma'am, for their valuable inputs and constant involvement. And finally, the hats off to our debaters, Dr. Lakshmi, madam, and Dr. Sangeeta Pawa, 
for proving their points and making debates so interesting and thanks for accepting the challenge also thank you so much i also want to thank our conveners dr gayatri gupta and dr ashurani for their smooth coordination and last but not the least i would like to thank our academic partners shield connect mr saurav ms chitrakala and mr steven for their all time support mm. now for a while we'll take a break from this virtual program and we will meet in person in aicog indore so hope we meet there until then goodbye and good night thank you so much once again thank you thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank, okay. thank, thank, thank you very much thank you ma'am everyone thank you jyotika ma'am thank you meeta ma'am thank you anita ma'am yeah bye good night bye good